I saw the documentary called International Boulevard by two high school girls. It really brought to light some of the sexual exploitation that's happening in Oakland. Just the atrocity of being able to purchase a human being on East 12th Street is really a sad, a sad reality. The age that girls were being recruited or lured into the um, into that kind of lifestyle uh, is now 11 years old. So I decided I would do a workshop for 11 to 15 year olds and we offered um, dance classes every day from 9 to 3. My goal is that the girls who take the workshop have a, a real sense that they're important and that their voices are important. And we started with hip hop because I knew that hip hop was going to be the most popular style. I thought it was really an important gift to be able to provide these bicycles and the girls would have a sense of agency. One of the things that we did with the bicycles too is we upcycled. So we took bicycles that were donated back to the bikery and um, hired people to maintain the bikes and fix the bikes. So that was a really great feeling too instead of like going to Walmart and purchasing a, a cheap bike that you know might fall apart and then just throw it back into landfill. We were able to employ people in the community as well. I really wanted to include urban planning because one of the things that came up last year in the workshop had to do with the girls feeling like they didn't have a safe space in Oakland. They felt like they, they had to be worried about home intrusion, they had to worry about rape that had been around school and in school, guns in front of their house, and they felt like they had to watch their backs wherever they were. Having the girls learn about 
their own neighborhoods and having a sense of power over their own uh, community, being able to lobby for what they wanted to, and that they realize that suggestions will be taken under consideration at the council level. I think one of the components of my work as an artist is the interview process and getting people to share their personal stories. In many instances, growing up as a woman of color, I didn't see my own story reflected. Once I started to see Asian American dancers on stage and people hearing, um, you know, telling and, and me hearing their stories really empowered me. So I think that that's an important component of my work. So every time I get an opportunity to work with girls, I often interview them. So this year we created this um, great collage of, of, of voices with the help of composer Pamela Z called My Advice. Them hearing their own voices and if possible, you know, sharing the stories with more people um, I think it's a tremendously empowering experience. And I knew I pulled a lot of girls that was doing what they're doing on East 14th Street here. So to see this program go through right here, this should have been on the news. If they could see what you've been doing with these all the different nationalities, different, you know what I'm saying? With everything going on in the community and out here and people trying to grab girls and grab kids, this is just awesome. It looks like a simple project on the outside. It's just like an art project. It's just a dance workshop. But really, I think it's building community in a very, very one-on-one -on -one way. And all of these organizations um, pull their resources together to make a change in community. And I think that that's one of the special things about it. I really liked expressing myself in this community because most people like to dance but they don't want to dance in public so this place gives us expression in public without being afraid of who you are When we think of the most horrific of crimes, the ones so morally repugnant and barbaric, you know, the widespread ones that make you question humanity, it can help us cope to believe they happen somewhere else, somewhere far away. That's why this weekend's FBI prostitution sting and capture of over 150 pimps was so disturbing. Over 100 children rescued. Sexual slavery here at home. How does it still happen? My dad was uh, never a nice guy. He would beat my mom and, uh, well, one day she told me to run away. I, I, wasn't, I was scared, so I did. And, and I met this guy who let me stay with him. I do favors for him all the time. I didn't understand what I was doing. I, I was only 11. We would always hang out after school and walk around together just to have some fun. Maybe get some ice cream. One time it got really late and a car pulled up next to us. Some guys got out, and one called me beautiful. They asked us to get into the car, so we did. They seemed so nice. My uncle lives with me and my family. He usually comes home late at night with, uh, you know, a friend. I don't see him much. He's always with his friend in his room. He keeps the door shut. She's different every time. I don't know how he has so many friends. I grew up on the streets of Oakland. Stuff happens all the time. People stop noticing, or I guess stop caring. It becomes invisible. I, I watched a lot of my friends get forced into cars. What goes on here, you know? It's not something we talk about. The sexualization of culture has fueled the world's human trafficking problem. Also breaking tonight, accused sex trafficker Mr. Money will soon have to spend some of his cash. Is part of this the hip hop community? You know, 
gun is part of it. Someone else said it's a replacement for drug crimes. Is that the case? The South man is accused of recruiting teenage girls to the sex industry. Action News 5's Janice Gross joins us live with details tonight. Janice. So you have an overpopulation of foster care youth and group home youth. You have an overpopulation of people living at or below the poverty line. You have a high homicide rate and you don't have the level of understanding or empathy. And cultural attitudes towards women must change in order to end human trafficking. The culture seems to be moving in a direction of um, not just endorsing or promoting the consumption of women, but the, the violent uh, perpetration against women. It's, it's really, it's, it's kind of shocking in that sense to think that we have reached this point where, I mean, it, it seems like there is no conscience at all left whatsoever. Are we going to keep walking past 13 year olds and seeing them being bought and sold and waiting for the police or waiting for a social worker or waiting for anybody to do anything about it? We have to respond. We have to be moved into action now. Because men in our culture are supposed to be so strong, masculine leaders, there's this idea that they can't be victims of domestic violence or sexual assault. Oftentimes, men are unable to speak about it because they're afraid that they'll be judged. Our sort of social stereotype is that this should be something he's happy about. When he's not, because he's a victim, that adds another layer of confusion. What's wrong with me? Why do I feel this is awful? How is he a victim? How is he harmed? I should have been so lucky when, when I was a teenager. You know, remarks from, from men that um, clearly don't appreciate the, the gravity of the situation. There is a stereotype that this is the luckiest guy in the world. We have to respond. We have to be. We have, have to respond. Now. We have to be moved into action now. We have to respond. We have to be moved into action now. Into action now. Into action now. Into action now. Action now. 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 Are we going to keep walking past 13 year olds and seeing them being bought and sold and waiting for the police or waiting for a social worker or waiting for anybody to do anything about it? We have to respond. We have to be moved into action now. we think, well, this is a movement for to stop sex trafficking, or this is a movement to protect the rights of our elders, or this is a movement to raise awareness that Black Lives Matter. And they seem so individualized, but actually it's a one movement, and it's a human rights movement. And so if we think about that, working together, there's a lot of us working together, that we don't feel so isolated. So I think that's the importance of communities that we're not alone.